it's a weekly ritual for Martha Pai Whenua and her niece Nevea. Anyone going through the loss of any child will understand. It is a grief that is beyond measure. And it's a pain you don't wish on anyone. Two years on, it's a little easier, but Martha still mourns for her nephew, Mister, who she took into her care with his twin sister as newborns after their mum, a methamphetamine user, was unable to care for them. Their mother died in 2020 from cancer. Why did you want to tell Mister's story? I wanted Mister's voice to be heard and the story of babies who are impacted by meth that don't get to tell their story, that don't get to be heard. Soon after she bought the twins home, she noticed that Mr. was not developing as quickly as his sister, and at four weeks, he experienced tremors and shakes. His breathing was very shallow in comparison to his sister. Uh, his... His feeding was also very different in comparison to his sister, as well as just like a normal baby that isn't born into these circumstances. It was quite obvious to see as we got on throughout the weeks leading up to his passing that there were uh, questions that I had about what these twins were exposed to prenatally. Martha, who was then completing a bicultural social work degree, was convinced that their exposure to meth had caused them harm. That sparked my curiosity to engage in research and to explore the space of what is going on with these twins and what's actually happening and what can I do to help them. And so you took them to get medical advice. And what was the response? Meth has no impacts. Categorically. That's what they said and that's what they said. That's how it was stated to me. They said, no, meth has no impacts. And that was it. Martha was told that the symptoms Mr was exhibiting were due to being premature and that everything would be fine. One doctor actually told me that I was paranoid and that I needed sleep. Yeah, and I just... <sighs> I was really disheartened and disappointed at that particular time when things were happening. I just knew we weren't going to get the help we needed and that I had to look abroad for answers. Uh, but they weren't open to having those conversations. Yeah, at all, at all. Even though there were the signs there, um, even though they had done the ECG scans and had seen the abnormalities that Mr's brain had, it was still a no. Martha believes a reluctance by medical professionals to take on board whanau experiences has led to a gap in care for children exposed to pee. When the specialist had not seen Mr, but cancelled his appointment, I knew that we weren't going to get no help and that they had already closed their mind to being open to hearing the voices of Fano. So this is why also I wanted to have this conversation so that we can highlight these key issues that we face in Aotearoa with our babies. New Zealand Police wastewater testing results released in April for the last quarter of 2021 showed a 32% increase in usage of methamphetamine compared to the previous four quarters. So it's been a key social issue that we've had here for a very long time. And it's just, it's such a shame that these babies are falling through the gaps and deaths like Mr's could have been preventable. The most comprehensive study here in Aotearoa into the effects of methamphetamine on the babies of users is led by Auckland University professor Dr Tricia Woolds. 
I get calls from all over the world, you know, wanting um, to know about these children. And to be honest, we don't know enough. Uh, we're st you know, we do need more research, but there's nothing to indicate that methamphetamine is, ca is, is causing uh, babies to die. Dr. Wiltz began a longitudinal study in 2005 using a case study of 107 mothers who had reported using methamphetamine while pregnant and matched them with a comparison group. The things that we look at for these children, and we look at everything, uh, I'm a developmental scientist, so I'm interested in their growth, their um, motor skills, their cognitive ability, their social emotional development. Um, you know, whether they are, have mental health problems, whether they have behavioral problems, so everything. And um, in addition to that, we're not just looking at the effects of methamphetamine, we're looking at the effects of, uh, of the child's environment. So what does it mean to be born exposed to a drug and then maybe be living in a household where there might be maternal or paternal mental illness, ongoing drug use, poverty, you know, a lack of resources, housing, all of those things. So it's not just the drug. And we, we, we think that probably it's going to be a combination of being exposed prenatally to a drug. But also we know that many of these women also use alcohol and tobacco and, and ma marijuana. So um, it's, it's more complex than just saying methamphetamine equals this. A 2012 New Zealand study looked into whether babies exposed to meth in utero were less likely to be able to wake themselves up from sleep, therefore being more susceptible to sudden infant death syndrome. But researchers found no difference with a comparison group. They did note, however, that neurobehavioural differences did exist one month postpartum, and further research could be aimed at more sensitive physiological measures of neural development to gain more insight. It's behaviour that we're finding is the problem. And it's, it's um, not that these children want to behave badly, um, and it is uh, problematic in their ability to manage their behaviour. But um, in terms of cognitive, you know, they can learn. They are, you know, they are not... Uh, lagging too far behind, but at six and a half, we did find that there were general memory problems with the children, and um, yeah, so so that it's not that there isn't any effect of this drug; it's just that it's behavioral rather than um, you know mental retardation or something like that. Martha agrees. More research is needed. What needs to happen is we need to be informed. The medical industry, the medical field, needs more thorough research that includes the voices of Fano, who have been through those experiences. There needs to be a call of action to all practitioners that work in the space of child welfare to get educated and informed in this space, to understand and know the signs of what they're seeing when it comes to prenatal exposure to meth in babies, toddlers, tamariki. We need to have the appropriate clinical spaces equipped with the resources that these babies need. We need the funding for this. They've poured millions into uh, the adult section of this kaupapa. And that I take my hat off to. Where's the babies in this? Mother is now in the process of selecting a PhD pathway to further her studies into the effects of methamphetamine on babies in utero. It is, it's not only just a financial toll, it's an emotional toll that takes, it, it, that takes It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. And I can take a lot. But this was different. 